Well, I'm, 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 I'm not to cut you off, but I'm really fat. And, well, back to this thing about, I guess, I don't know what to call it, living in the manure or something like that. In other words, when you, like you say, you're in that church or, or you're in that, that musical moment where you, you're, you have to totally be in it. How, can you make an association between that and this and this and this status the 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 blood the, the the bad black aesthetic on the world today let me put it that way but in other words it seems like a lot of people are so far out that they can never get back in and when they get in they bring that they bring that negative that stuff that they they was out well, there with I, I don't they know that, no, they, you have look um you say they're so far, they get so far out, meaning they get away from it. Yeah, uh, or they, they they lose the sensibility of it. They they, they, they forget the they, they they forget that they are they are musicians. They were musicians, or, or they are or you the spirituality. Musicians now, or just uh, no no. I'm going to say musicians. I I mean the magicians. Uh, or, the magicians. Or, or, yeah. The magicians okay, or okay. the um. Uh, uh, wait, uh, here's what happens. Uh, I have had. I've had opportunity to work with a lot of uh, uh, young actors, mm -hmm. and they're always astonished by the way I, my approach to the work, because I'm not using Stanislavski and all those things. Mm -hmm. And so they're astonished because I, I constantly talk about, I know this. Let me go back one step for, for that. Okay. Mm -hmm. When I first came back to the United States, the reason I came back primarily was because I was offered a job to teach at Howard University mm -hmm. and in 1968. I took the job because on the day that I arrived here to go to my talk with the people down at Howard in D.C., that same day, King was killed. Mm -hmm. and so when I went down the next day, there was I was in a... Yeah, Washington D.C. was uh, like all this army all over the place, and I got to the campus. Howard was locked down. A guy came up to open the gate for me. He looked like he's a white guy, turned out to be a black guy. He was he was the one who was supposed to be talking to me. Well, you know, down there, that's the area with the whole Jack and Jill, the whole that well, whole it class. It looked like so. at a plantation with the white guy walking up to open the gate. When who are you? Are you Harrison? I said, I I want. I came look for this guy. He said, Well, I'm the guy. And after that conversation with him, I went back to Amsterdam two days later. And I thought about all that had happened in those few days in the King. I decided to take the job. Okay, so I came here. I brought my first black, when I say black, fully black casted work. It, it, had, uh, it was a cast of about 20 black, 20 black men. Mm -hmm. I couldn't find 20 black, I could find two black men in Amsterdam, so I couldn't do it there. Mm. And, and it had to have a certain music to it, kind of a cold train that's music that was attached to it. So when I got this job, I said, the first thing I was going to do is going to produce this piece. Mm. I, put, I did this piece, I put this piece together, and in the first week of rehearsal, the actors kept saying, uh, nah, wait, wait a minute, uh, how, what does this mean? I said, what does it mean? It's English, what do you mean? Yeah, but he said, so I said, I said, oh, that's what it means, okay. I said, well, 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 how would you say it? And the guy would say it. The actor would say it. Said, go, let's go on. This interruption happened several times that first week, but people would stop, they didn't understand what I was saying. Hmm. Now I'd ask them to say what they would say. And I would write it down. Then after a week of this, I looked at this thing, I said, Oh, I see what's happened here. I had been living in Holland so long that I was writing English as if I was using, I was using a Dutch syntax to write in English. I had, the words were perfect, but the, the inversion of the, of the you know, the, the verbs and, 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 and you know, the, the syntax was off. And these, these black kids could not say it. They, they, couldn't, they couldn't get their chops around it. Not only well, because of difficult words, just that the, the rhythm of the thing was off. I stopped time, I stopped the rehearsals, spent 10 days, went to the country, spent 10 days, rewrote the whole play, came back to rehearsal, gave it to these people. These guys just said, oh yeah, I, just, I know what this is. <laughs> that's about coming back around. Uh, 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 <laughs> I'm going to tell you yeah, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. because it's about coming back around. 
you suddenly you've been away so long that you that you really think your language even becomes shaped by that other experience mm. and somebody has to pull your coat and if you and if you're attentive if you if you if you pay attention to what they're trying to tell you 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 bring it right back around yeah. you know you know really 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 all oh, entirely forget it and that's when I what I would find working with the trained black actors who went to Yale who had gone to Yale and places I said well, how would your mama say that Mm. How would your grandmother say that? Why are you? Why do you put? Why is it so arched? Why is it so false in its rhythm? Where does the text move you? To? Where? What, what? You know? What are other things? Why does the text sound so other, otherworldly? You know? Mm -hmm. You know? Here's the situation, and they would get it, and they were always gratified by the end of the whole process. Mm. They found a way to get back into a, a, a rhythmic sensibility that belonged to their cultural sense, you know, and what they were doing. So it is always possible if somebody encourages it and helps you, helps direct you there, like those kids directed me back to myself. It's like, you know, um, how do you, you, know, you gotta have some help sometimes. Mm. And, and this is what I've been doing for years. Um, when, when I did, when I did uh, Ain't supposed to die a natural death out in California. And it was an entirely different piece of the thing that showed up on Broadway. And the thing I did out there with Melvin Van Peebles' poems, I took them out when I left town. I went out there to this university out there. And three months working with these kids on just this text and how to create a modality of how to create a space for these poems and a purpose oh, okay, for them, good. which is why it was called Ain't Supposed to Die Natural okay, Death. So by the end, you come out of this ritualistic movement and talk language thing and you create this environment, this tense environment, where the text flows out of it and you never stop the movement, you never stop any activity. You never, and the text is something pops up out of here and everything else is still going on and then it recedes and another text pops up mm. and, and nothing ever stops. It's one big musical orchestration. Mm. Yeah, I saw the Broadway production side. So well, that's the Broadway thing. Yeah. But on, when I did thing. it originally, you don't have those yeah. march uh, texts coming across the stage as a kind of recitation of black life. Yeah. It, see, that had to get away from the notion mm. that we're talking about replication. We're talking about invention, trying to, and you had to, what we did, it puts you in it, and that's why I went to Broadway. The guy came in, he saw that, he said, we gotta take this to Broadway. I said, okay, let's go. But I, and we, worked, we couldn't work out my deal to be there, so I, I said, no, I don't want to do it. But the point is that it was not supposed to be a, a replica, a, 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 a finding across the stage giving a recitation mm. from, on a black life. It is, those things had to find its way into the very, motile way into the movement and stuff that the text would come out and wouldn't stop it else. You were in that environment, you were in that whole community. Yeah, yeah. In an open space. Yeah. Not a designated space. This is the hood. It, you you created the space yeah. in an open space. You knew where you were. Yeah. Well Paul Carter Harris, I want to profoundly thank you for taking Sorry. time out of your life. And it's been a long life to, to just speak to this uh, yeah, sometime humble <laughs> servant of the theater. But let me ask you something, just one last question. I don't know if it's a stock question of mine or whatever have you. Since we live in this kind of world, this will be recorded, put on YouTube or whatever have you in sections. What would you say to an audience? I'm not saying any kind of racial audience. Uh, say uh, 75 years from now, what would you want to tell them? Well, I, I don't, I'm not. It, it depends on what's going on 75 years from now. Well, you know? what what you? Did, well, I leave that. I leave it like that. Go ahead. You know, but I mean, basically, uh, basically, uh, every every time, there's a way. There's, there's something to 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 reference in the lives of people, just generally. It's about who gets to tell it, what particular form it takes to tell it. And my notion is that from the, from the Afri Africanity, the African, African uh, diasporic way of telling the story, it, is, it has to be informed by your cultural sensibility. And 
everybody will get it universally. It's when you start trying to cross over to make it understood in other cultures, make it understood in a quote unquote universal way, it's when it falls apart and it becomes it becomes very, very, uh, very how do you call that, um, uh, anemic mm. uh, kind of expression. It loses power. It, the power is not there. If you're Japanese, you're telling the same story about today. If you're looking across from Japan and you look at the story of Trump's emergence, you need to tell it from the, from the standpoint of being Japanese in Japan. Mm. If you're in Africa and you look at the Trump thing, you got to talk about it from the standpoint of your own cultural sensibility and talk about it in that way. And it'll, it will it give uh, it'll become uh, understood universally. I mean, you're not going to say, "How can I make the Americans understand this? How can I make you know, as a Japanese, how can I make the Americans understand this?" You have to start it from your own point point of point of view. As an African American or African Caribbean. African, uh, South American, you have to start it from that point, your diasporic experience. You cannot, you cannot create universality. You can borrow it, and, and it, always will, it, it always will undermine what you really want to say, what you really want to do. Um, uh, So-called, so the, the best of, the, uh, of those kinds of uh, works might be, um, uh, like, uh, I guess, uh, Lorraine Hansberry, uh, in terms of realism, American realism, but but today those plays won't work. A play like Raisin in the Sun. I say those plays belong on television only. Mm -hmm. They don't. But if you're talking about theater, which has opportunity for this rich, in a, a rich um, orchestration of sound and and text and visual images and lighting and all of that being orchestrated together and if it comes from a place that's going to be empower where the objective is empowerment and revitalization and healing and understanding in a very enlightened way about your condition your circumstances that's theater that's not doing a play anymore. You're talking about doing theater. You've got to create those rituals that allow that to happen. That's, that's what, the, way I, the way I'm coming from right here. And I think that's what should happen in the future as well. Thanks so much.